Buy low, sell high. It's the oldest and most simplest rule to follow when it comes to investing. While it may seem obvious, you'd be surprised how hard it is to put into practice. We talking about practice. And that's because investing is a discipline which plays on people's behavioral responses. So when the stock market's going up, everyone thinks they're a genius and people start to get greedy. But when the stock market dips or goes into a bear market, people panic. That's because holding on to stocks during periods of intense stock market volatility takes a lot of discipline and isn't what the human brain is programmed to withstand. Now, there's an ocean of information out there, but sorting through it requires deliberate, thoughtful reflection when piecing together what you've read. So, with all that in mind, how do you start investing if you have little to no background in it? In this video, I'll show you how to start investing in 5 simple steps. Step 1. Invest in yourself. Investing is incredibly rewarding, but there are risks involved. So the first thing to do is evaluate your financial situation. Do you have an emergency fund in place? Your emergency fund should be enough to cover 3-6 to six months of your living expenses. If you want more cushion, aim for 6-12 to 12 months. This might sound like a lot if you've got nothing currently, but if you start small with $100, then $1,000, then $5,000, eventually you reach your goal. But make sure you're realistic with your budget and fully fund this personal finance necessity before contributing anything meaningful towards retirement. Do you have any high interest debt? Nope. High interest debt can include credit card debt and student loans. For example, a reasonable return to expect for stocks is 7-8%. to 8%. So. If you have a credit card balance at 9% or higher, you may want to pay that off before investing. Are you current on all your bills? Next question. Next question. You might be thinking you should save for retirement before paying off your bills, but this is a mistake. Stupid. If you're behind on your monthly bills, then you need to take care of these past due expenses before saving for retirement. Getting current on all of your financial obligations is important because it will make sure that if anything were to happen to you in the future, where you couldn't work or had emergency expenses come up, then there will be no debt hanging over your head. Lastly, do you have extra money after you pay your expenses each month? There's a risk to invest in your money and it's a long-term process, so be sure you could live without the amount of money you plan to invest. Once you're done taking care of all those things, you're now ready to start investing. Step 2. Choose an investment strategy. Investing to build wealth isn't one size fits all. How you approach investing depends on a variety of factors including your risk tolerance, your investment goals, and your time horizon. For example, if you're investing to build a nest egg for retirement, your time horizon will be longer than if you're investing your money to save for a down payment on a home. The goal and timeline can then help to choose an account type and suitable investments. Following the SMART acronym for setting investment goals can work as a good outline. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. For example, Reaching $1 million for retirement by investing $500 per month, averaging an 8% return for 40 years, is a smart goal. Investors also need to gauge their risk capacity, which is how much of their money they can afford to invest. Essentially, risk capacity is an amount you can invest that won't break your budget. The general rule of thumb is 10-15% to 15 of your annual income each year should be allocated for long-term investing. After figuring out your risk capacity, investors need to also figure out their risk tolerance. Risk tolerance is a measure of how much risk you're comfortable taking with investments. For example, if you have a high risk tolerance, you're generally comfortable accepting a high degree of risk in exchange for the possibility of receiving high returns on your investments. But if you're risk averse, you'll probably be more comfortable with lower risk investments that may produce lower returns. Whatever your risk tolerance, one of the best ways to manage risk is to own a variety of different investments. You probably heard the saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. In the world of investing, this concept is called diversification, and the right level of diversification makes for a successful, well-rounded investment portfolio. For example, if the stock market is doing well and gaining steadily, it's possible that parts of the bond market might be slipping lower. If your investments were concentrated in bonds, you might be losing money. But if you were properly diversified across bond and stock investments, you could limit your losses. By owning a range of investments in different companies and different asset classes, you can buffer the losses in one area with the gains in another. This keeps your portfolio steadily and safely grown over time. Before you decide which investments to choose, 
you need to figure out what kind of investor you are. Are you an active investor or passive investor? Active investing involves actively choosing stocks or other assets to invest in, as well as active management of investments. Active investors prefer trading more frequently and opportunistically to capitalize on market fluctuations. These stock traders may use technical analysis, support and resistance levels, the study of past market data such as trading volume or price trends to help anticipate where market prices might go. Unless you are sure of your skills, active investing is not advised for long-term investing. Passive investment involves more of a buy and hold strategy with passive investment selection, such as index funds. The buy and hold strategy seeks investments that will perform well over many years. The idea is to not get rattled when the market dips in the short term, but to hold on to your investments and stay the course. This means investors must carefully evaluate their investment, whether they are index funds or individual stocks, for their long-term growth prospects. One of the great things about the buy and hold strategy is that it often beats the return of active investing. One of the main strategies strategies buy and hold investors use is dollar cost averaging. Dollar cost averaging involves investing the same amount of money in the same stock or asset at regular intervals over a certain period of time regardless of price. Over time, you gain a better average entry price and reduce the impact of market volatility on your portfolio. Some of the more commonly used strategies investors use to tailor their investment portfolio to their style and situation are growth investing, value investing, and income investing. Growth investing involves buying shares of emerging companies that appear poised to grow at an above average pace in the future. While growth stocks are far from a sure thing, their attraction is that they might grow in value much faster than established stocks if the underlying business takes off. Growth investors are willing to pay a premium price for these stocks in exchange for their robust future growth potential. Growth investing is generally recommended for those in their 20s and 30s who have plenty of time to recover from market declines. Next, we have value investing, made famous by investors like Warren Buffett. Value investing is the bargain shopping of investment strategies. By purchasing what they believe to be undervalued stocks with strong long-term prospects, value investors aim to reap the rewards when the companies achieve their true potential in the years ahead. Value investing usually requires a pretty active hand, someone who is willing to watch the market and news for clues on which stocks are undervalued at any given time. Value investing is considered a contrarian strategy because investors are going against the grain or investing in stocks or sectors currently out of favor. Lastly, we have income investing. Many investors use income investing to produce a steady income stream to help cover their living expenses, particularly when transitioning into retirement. Income investing is typically for older people in their 50s and 60s and is generally not recommended for people in their 20s and 30s. Now that you're aware of the various investment strategies, it's time for step three, select an investment account. For many people, the best place to begin investing is your employer sponsored retirement plan likely a 401k or a 403b offered through your employer's benefits package. In a 401k plan, the money you contribute each paycheck will grow tax-free until you begin withdrawals upon reaching retirement age. Many employers will even offer matching contributions up to a certain percentage for employees who participate in their sponsored plans. If the logistics of a 401k confuses you, which can be the case especially if you're a recent college graduate or someone who has never contributed, Look to your employer for guidance. Your plan's administrator, which is sometimes a big broker such as Fidelity, Charles Schwab, or Vanguard, may offer tools and planning resources helping you educate yourself on good investment practices and the options available in the 401k plan. When it comes to 401k, employers typically offer a traditional 401k and a Roth 401k. A traditional 401k allows you to deduct your contributions from your paycheck so that you don't pay taxes on it today, only when you withdraw the money later. A Roth 401k allows you to withdraw your money tax-free after years of gains, but you have to pay tax on contributions. If your employer doesn't offer a 401k plan, you're a non-traditional worker, or you simply want to contribute more, consider opening a traditional IRA or Roth IRA. A traditional IRA is similar to a 401k. You put money in tax-free, let it grow over time, and pay taxes when you withdraw it in retirement. With the Roth IRA, on the other hand, you invest taxable income and then the money grows tax-free and is not taxed upon withdrawal. The IRS limits the amount you can add to each of these accounts annually, so be sure to stay within these rules. 
For 2022, the contribution limit is set at $20,500 for 401k accounts before employer match and $6,000 for an IRA. Older workers, those over age 50, can add an additional $6,500 to a 401k as a catch-up contribution, while an IRA allows an additional $1,000 contribution. If you're self-employed and need higher contribution limits than other IRAs, then a SEP IRA may be right for you. If you're investing for another goal, you'd likely want to avoid retirement accounts, which are designed to be used for retirement and thus have restrictions about when and how you can take your money back out, and instead, you should choose a taxable brokerage account. You can remove money from a taxable brokerage account at any time. Other non-retirement accounts include a health savings account and a 529 college savings plan. A health savings account is a type of savings account that lets you set aside money on a pre-tax basis for future qualified medical expenses while a 529 college savings plan is a tax advantage savings plan that enables you to save money for a beneficiary and pay for education expenses. Now that you're aware of the various account types, it's time to actually decide which investment vehicles are best for your current situation. Depending on your investment strategy, there are several investment vehicles to choose from that can help you build wealth. A portfolio with a diversified asset allocation, one that invests in a range of investment vehicles, helps you spread out and manage overall portfolio risk. Some of the most commonly used investment vehicles include stocks, bonds, mutual funds, exchange-traded funds, and real assets. A stock is the share of ownership in a single company. Stocks are also known as equities. They are generally suitable for investors who have a moderate to high tolerance for risk. A bond is essentially a loan to a company or government entity, which agrees to pay you back in a certain number of years. In the meantime, you get interest payments. Wait, you guys are getting paid? Bonds are suitable for investors with low tolerance for risk, preferring more stable returns compared to stocks. A mutual fund is a mix of investments packaged together. Mutual funds allow investors to skip the work of picking individual stocks and bonds and instead purchase a diverse collection in one transaction. The inherent diversification of mutual funds make them generally less risky than individual stocks. Most 401ks offer a curated selection of mutual or index funds with no minimum investment. But outside of these plans, these funds may require a minimum of $1,000 or more. A few key things to keep in mind when deciding to purchase a mutual fund are the trading fees, as well as the management expense ratio, MER. The MER is charged by the management team each year based on the number of assets in the fund. The MER ranges from 0.05 to 0.7% annually and varies depending on the type of fund. But the higher the MER, the more it affects the fund's overall returns. You may also see something called loads when you buy mutual funds. A load fund is a mutual fund that comes with a sales charge or commission. There are front-end loads, back-end loads, level loads, and no loads. Front-end loads are paid up front at the time of purchase. Back-end loads are paid when the shares are sold. Level loads are paid as long as the fund is held by the investor. No loads do not have a sales charge. Be sure you understand whether a fund that you're considering carries a sales load prior to buying it. Like a mutual fund, an ETF holds many individual investments bundled together. The difference is that ETFs trade throughout the day like a stock and are purchased for a share price. An ETF's share price is often lower than the minimum investment requirement of a mutual fund, which makes ETFs a good option for new investors or small budgets. Lastly, we have real assets, which are an investment in something tangible like real estate, commodities such as oil, and precious metals such as gold. For most investors, Index fund investing is probably the most recommended strategy. Index funds are mutual funds or ETFs that passively track an underlying index such as the S&P 500 or the Nasdaq. When an investor buys an index fund, they are buying a set of securities that can represent the broad market segments or niche areas of the market. For those looking for a set it and forget it method, a target date fund is your best option. Here's how it works. You pick a fund that is dated around when you plan to retire, and that fund shifts the risk profile of its investments as you approach that date. To put it in simple terms, target date funds help take the guesswork out of saving for retirement. 
They are typically the best investment strategies for most people planning for retirement because they provide a diversified mix of equities and fixed income that rebalances over time. Now that you're aware of the various investment accounts and investment vehicles, it's time for step four. Choose a broker or advisor. Maybe you're a do-it-yourself kind of investor. Fine. I'll do it myself. Or perhaps you prefer to enlist the help of an investment advisor or financial planner. Bear Stearns is not in trouble. I mean, if anything, they're more likely to be taken over. Don't move your money from Bear. That's just being silly. Or maybe you want to automate your investments with a robo-advisor. It's important to explore this part of your investing personality and preference before choosing what you end up using. So if you have a little bit of money to start an account, but don't want the burden of picking and choosing investments, you might start investing with a robo-advisor like Wealthfront or Betterment. These are automated investing platforms that help you invest your money in pre-made, diversified portfolios customized for your risk tolerance and financial goals. If you'd prefer a more hands-on approach in choosing your investments, open an online brokerage account at Schwab or Fidelity. If you're a beginner, Remember the easy diversification that mutual funds and ETFs offer. If you'd prefer a hands-off approach to investing and want help from a professional, talk to a financial advisor. With the financial advisor, you can build a relationship with a trusted professional who understands your goals and can help you choose and manage your investments over time. So don't be afraid to ask them questions about their recommendations and make sure to confirm that they are a fiduciary acting in your best interest. Also, make sure you understand their payment plan so you're not hit by any hidden fees. Once you're done with all the previous steps, you're finally ready for step five, the final step. Start buying, keep learning. Before placing trades in your investment account, you will need to fund it with cash. This is typically done with a simple form completed online that will connect your bank account with your brokerage for electronic funds transfer. Once connected, you can transfer single fixed amounts or you can set up recurring amounts to transfer periodically, such as monthly. And boom, that's it. You're on your way to building wealth. But the road to building wealth is never done. Taking all the reputable information you can find about investing in the stock market including books, online articles, experts on social media, and even YouTube videos. Download financial news apps to keep up to date on what's going on in the economy in regards to jobs, GDP, inflation, and the Federal Reserve. Try not to micromanage, but do be sure to check on your investment account on a monthly or quarterly basis, regardless of how you choose to start investing. Keep in mind that investing is a long-term process and that you'll reap the greatest benefits by consistently investing over time. That means sticking with an investment strategy whether markets are up or down. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.